Right, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to MCM Outdoors. Another short video, a festive gift idea. Time's getting tight and the big day is nearly here. So for those of you who might be thinking of what to buy, loved ones, friends or family if they're into the outdoors, got another product idea here for you today. First of all, as is customary for our channel videos, got a nice craft beer that be with me on this video. So what we're looking at here is a stove, a camping stove from a company called EOE which is Eiffel Outdoor Equipment and this particular stove the model of it is called a Cobalton and it is a remote gas canister stove. I've used lots of different camping stoves over the years and this one was kindly sent to me by my friends over at Valley and Peak I've used it for a while now and this design is pretty similar to other stoves which I've used. I like it and I'll explain why shortly and why I think it's a good product to buy and it's a cracking bit of kit. I will leave a link up there just to when I was using the stove on a bit of a trip out a couple of weeks ago. But when you buy it, it comes obviously in a cardboard box and you get this lovely mesh carrying pouch, stuff sack, whatever you want to call it, with a nice drawstring and toggle for closure. So if we get into that, just put that down for one second, it's all folded together. As per whenever I review a product, we'll look at it in a lot more detail in a minute with some close-up shots and I'll be talking over it. We get a length of hose, which has got this metallic jacket, sleeve if you will, round there just to protect the the hose where obviously the gas flows through. The valve for the stove is on this swivel, basically the on off, controls the flow of the gas, but that swivels 360 degrees and that allows you to invert the gas canister. Again, I'll demonstrate all this closer up after I've talked about it for a bit. So you've got the length of hose, which goes into the burner head itself. We've got a couple of, or three, tripod fold out feet folds out and gives it a nice stable platform and then there are three fold out pan or pot supports. Now this particular stove has a brass preheating tube and in short anyone who's used gas stoves with a butane propane mix in the colder months of the year or in snowy or icy conditions you will know that the stove becomes less efficient. That's just a matter of simple physics and the byproduct of that is longer boil times, waiting longer for your hot water, for your morning brew or whatever. So in short, with the preheating tube, the gas flows through the tube and when the stove's ignited, which I'll demonstrate, the gas heats up in the tube prior to it actually being ignited. So that makes the stove much more efficient and powerful in the colder weather. I've used stoves without this in icy and snowy conditions and it's barely able to light and you're waiting around for a long long time for your hot drink or cooking up your meal. It actually works, it's well known, um, stoves with preheating tubes, they perform better than their counterparts which don't. And the fact that, like I say, you can invert the gas cartridge, that is good. Again, colder weather and this just uses the screw on type cartridges, colder weather, just invert your canister and that will aid the efficiency and increase the efficiency of the stove and result in shorter boil times, use less gas and in short it's cheaper to run. So, sip the old craft beer. The weight is very low in my opinion but of course that's subjective, we've got the ultralight hikers amongst us. It's 146 grams all in. In my book, that is a lightweight stove, okay? It sits very low to the ground, so it's nice and stable, and the canister is obviously remote from the stove itself. Now, it, uh, in terms of power, it's 2,800 watts, and the price is £44.99 at the moment on the Valley and Peak website. Links to purchase it, I will leave in the description box below. But a big plus regarding this stove 
and I'll ignite it in a minute and show you how it operates and the flame control, which is really subtle, very fine flame control, which you can go from a simmer to a roaring jet. That comes in very handy for those that don't wish to cremate the food and have it stuck and burnt to the bottom of the pan, which some stoves can suffer from, which don't offer such a high degree of flexibility regarding the flame control. But I like this particular design in certain scenarios. And the scenario I find this type of stove most useful for is when I'm cooking inside the tent. Yes, shock, horror, the health and safety police will be jumping all over this one. Cooking in your tent, you say, you shouldn't do that, it's very dangerous and you might get carbon monoxide poisoning or burn the tent down. It's a matter of personal preference, isn't it? If you're going to cook in your tent, which lots of us do, when it's raining, inclement weather, you're obviously in a confined space. Obviously make sure it's well ventilated, but this isn't a health and safety lecture. There's enough of that nonsense in the world as it is, frankly. So why I like this is some stoves where you attach the burner head to the top of the gas cartridge, that means the flame is somewhat higher. And if you're cooking inside a tent, a higher flame means it's closer to the fabric of your tent and there's more chance of something going wrong burning your tent fabric, putting a hole in your tent, an absolute catastrophe. With these remote stoves, it obviously operates much lower to the ground, very low down, which means it's further away from the fabric of your fly sheet. Now I've been camping, walking, going outdoors for almost 25 years now, so trust me, I'm speaking from experience. No, I've never burnt my tent down, I've always managed to avoid that situation, but it's much easier less stressful and safer, in my humble opinion, using one of these remote canister stoves inside a tent. It's very stable, got this tripod feet. I'm gonna look at it in a lot more detail now, overlay some music throughout this video. Hope you don't mind that. But, you know, the pot supports can support a wide variety of cookware. Be that, this is an MSR Titan kettle with a wide base, goes ideal on that or a smaller cup. If the pot supports are too wide apart, some of your cookware might fall through the middle and you get problems with spillages and you obviously can't use it correctly, but these aren't. This is just a small um, 400 mil Alkit titanium mug. These are pretty generic also. I don't know the exact specs of this, but that fits on there quite easily as well. And um, the pot supports aren't too wide apart. So it's flexible in that regard, it's light, I believe it's good value for money. Obviously that's subjective. I think this is quite reasonably priced for what it is. Uh, but obviously people are on different budgets. There are different stoves out there which suit cheaper budgets, but this is well made, it works, and it's not gonna let you down. We're gonna have a look at it. I'm gonna show you the stove in operation, and then I will sign off on this one. If you've got any questions about it, just let me know in the comments below. And as always, I try my best. If people take the time to watch and comment on my videos, I always think the least I can do is take the time to write back um, and I'll do that for as long as I can. So let's have a look at it in a bit more detail and I will see you on the next video. So here's a closer look at the stove itself, you got your burner head, the brass preheating tube, gas flows through, up, gets heated by the jet of the flame, flows back down into the combustion area and your warmer, more efficient gas results in less boil times in colder weather. You've got your nice flexible hose here which has got a swivel on it, that's your flame control. Just a simple twist on off. It really is good the flame control on it and I'll show you that shortly. And obviously a nice flexible hose protected by this metallic sheath. So we're going to ignite the stove now, just got a screw adapter, your gas cartridges, gas canisters, simply screw onto the stove, really simple. Top tip, obviously make sure it's closed on there. The quicker you do it, the less gas escapes, there's a little bit of a hiss there as the seal is pierced and that is it. Like I say in colder weather, you might want to invert that. Okay, as I say it's on the swivel, again just improves 
the efficiency of the stove. A little bit safer as well because you've got the gas situated away from the actual burner head as well. So let's get the stove lit. I'll leave all the specs below. Now there's various different ways you can ignite these. You can use a ferrocerium rod, um, you could use a flint and steel if you wish, matches, lighter, whatever you want. All you do is start the flow of the gas and there we go, the stove's lit. I'll just show you, full blast. Really is quite powerful. You can feel the heat from here, 2,800 watts. I'll just lower it down slightly. Now, this stove is very quiet. Some of them sound like, you know, an F-18 taking off when they're on full blast. This is very, very quiet. A lot of people who like to blend in a little bit more, stealthy campers, um, might like that. Um, but it is one of the quietest stoves I've used. As you can see, the flame control there, I'm just taking that as far as I can without it going out. That's about the limits, but it really is really fine flame control. Turn it off, don't need to waste our gas. So basically, this is a cracking stove, really is. It's lightweight, it's good value, it's very well made, and I do recommend it, especially if you're gonna be cooking inside an awning of a tent. So, it comes well recommended. Thanks, Mark and Mary from Valley and Peak for sending me this stove to test out and you won't go far wrong with this. A link to purchasing the stove is below. Have a great Christmas and I will see you on the next video and we'll look at another gift idea for the outdoors fans in your life. Take care everyone. And I'm not there I don't know what he want now But I don't care